Deep within the arid scrublands of Venezuela, among the agave and the cacti, is a colorful nocturnal predator that is among some of the most beautiful animals on the planet. Over millions of years of evolution, this species has been honed into a hunting machine. Laying in wait in its burrow for an unlucky insect, small lizard, or even a small mammal to cross its path. Making their home at the base of the cacti or in the crevice of a rock, the green bottle blue tarantula spins up a home of web, creating tunnels for it to hide in, and laying a thin layer of webbing around its burrow that acts like trip lines or sensors so it can feel any prey that has ventured into its territory. Though the environment where they make their home is very hot and dry, they typically spend their days hidden away from the sun and the heat, hiding out in the cool, dark safety of their lair. The Chromatopelma cyanopubescence is a spider classified as Megalomorphae, which evolved and branched off from true spiders over 300 million years ago. More specifically, they are in the family Theraphosidae, which consists of over 100 different genuses and over a thousand species of tarantula. Originally described by Strand in 1907 as Uripelma cyanopubescens, they were later reclassified in 1939 into the Delapelma genus, commonly known today as a Faunapelma. Through closer observation and study, it became apparent that there were some very serious anatomical differences between the GBB and other Afonopelma tarantulas, mainly their burrowing characteristics. So in 1995, the researcher Schmidt created the Chromatopelma genus just for this tarantula, a genus they are still the only species of to this day. Of all the tarantulas on the planet though, there are few as colorful and as beautiful as this particular species, with their bright greens, blues, and orange or red hairs. Tarantulas mostly hunt at night, ambushing their prey while they stay hidden in the mouths of their burrows. They sense the approaching prey and navigate the landscape, not so much by eyesight, but by using chemotactile scents which essentially means they can sense chemical changes in their environment. Even though, like most spiders, the GBB has eight eyes, their eyesight is rather poor, and they are believed to not be able to see in great detail, or even distinguish between different colors very well. With a possible exception being the color blue, which they seem to be able to perceive rather well. It makes you wonder why the green bottle blue evolved over time to have such unique patterns and bright colors because based on their inability to see colors, it doesn't appear to be part of any type of mating signal. This has led scientists to theorize it may be a result of natural selection for reasons not yet fully understood and that need to be studied further. Many nocturnal animals are able to see yellow and green wavelengths of light very well, which gives them a very good night vision. With night vision, the color green would blend in with the surroundings, though it would be seen very bright, which is possibly why solid bright green tarantulas are very rare, while the color blue would blend in with the background much better, making them more difficult to be seen by potential predators. So the combination of blue legs and bluish green carapace might help camouflage them from their nocturnal predators and make them appear to have a shape not immediately recognizable as a tarantula, giving their predator with night vision pause before attacking. Unlike most spiders, tarantulas do not catch their prey using their web. Tarantulas have long, hair-like structures all over their body called setae that they use to sense not only chemical changes in the air, but they are sensitive enough to feel the change in movement of air molecules. They also have very sensitive receptors in their feet that can feel the slightest movement and vibration. Using all of these senses combined, they can determine the location of their prey and patiently lie in wait, then quickly pounce before most prey has a chance to escape. They have large fangs that inject a paralyzing venom into their prey, quickly rendering them motionless. 
While this venom can be deadly to small inverts, mammals, and reptiles, it is actually very mild in comparison to the venom of other animals and possesses no real danger to humans other than a little pain and discomfort. Mainly, the venom is used to subdue and kill their prey before they begin feeding upon them. For self-defense, the Green Bottle Blue has another weapon in its arsenal called urticating hairs. They kick these hairs off their bodies in a cloud towards anything they perceive as a danger, and they are very effective. Urticating setae have barbs all along the shaft of the hair, so when they penetrate the skin, they hook in, much like a fish hook, and become lodged, creating a histamine reaction in the body. In humans, this can cause itching and maybe even a burning sensation, as well as a small rash, swelling, or even bumps or hives. Though very irritating and uncomfortable, rarely is medical attention required unless there is an anaphylactic reaction. Though if these hairs were to get into your nose, mouth, or throat, the reaction and discomfort could be much more severe. But for reptiles, birds, or mammals that may try to make this tarantula their next meal, these hairs can be quite effective in deterring an attack, as they can cause blindness, restrict breathing, and other serious complications to any predator that attempts to sneak up on a GBB and catches a face full of their urticating setae. This tarantula can grow up to about 6 inches in leg span, with females living up to 14 years, while males live only about 4 years. Females are usually a little larger with a stockier body, while males appear thinner and have longer legs. When mature and ready to mate, the males also develop tibial hooks on their front pair of legs that they use to hold the female's fangs while mating, as well as palpal bulbs on their pedipalps. For the most part, female GBBs do not venture far beyond the area surrounding their burrow, spending the majority of their lives straying no more than 10 feet from where they have their elaborate webbing. Males, on the other hand, having reached maturity, begin wandering the area once the sun begins to set and temperatures are going back down, searching through the night for a female's burrow and a chance to attempt mating. It is not uncommon for the female to eat the male after mating, but if the male escapes becoming her next meal, his time is still limited as he does not have much longer to live after becoming fully mature. The Chromatopelma cyanopubescens lays her eggs and keeps them safely in a sack made from her own webbing that she protects tirelessly until they begin to hatch. Each sack can have as many as 100 to 200 eggs or more that will hatch and begin molting until they become spiderlings. Not all the spiderlings will survive, as some are weak and die from exposure, while others may be cannibalized by other spiderlings in her brood but a good number of them will grow and eventually leave her burrow and venture out to make their own burrows and begin hunting. As spiderlings, these baby GBBs look very different than adult green bottle blue tarantulas, with a black and orange striped abdomen, black and light orange or even tan legs, and a gold and black carapace. But as they get older, each molt reveals a slightly different pattern and coloration that slowly begins to resemble the adult coloration more and more. Though this world is filled with fascinating creatures, there are few tarantulas that are as colorful and as beautiful as the Chromatopelma cyanopubescence, making them both fascinating to observe in nature if you're lucky to come across one in the wild, as well as a very popular tarantula to keep as a pet. Known among the tarantula hobby as one of the best displayed tarantulas, there are few species that rival them in beauty, personality, and the ability to create gorgeous, intricate webbing. Now I know this video is a lot different than the videos I normally make, but if you enjoyed it, make sure you hit that like button and let me know. And if you didn't like it, hit that dislike button and let me know that as well. But either way, leave a comment down below and give me your thoughts on this style of video. And if there are other species you'd like to see a video like this on in the future, tell me about that in the comments as well. Now if you want to see the care and husbandry video I made on the green bottle blue tarantula, just click this video right here. And if you want to know my picks for the best tarantulas in the hobby, just watch this video right here.
here. As always, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise, and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>